If you want the gills, we got the skills right here at 302 Fishing. Welcome back to the channel here. If you're brand new and you haven't already done so, click that subscribe button, push that notification bell. That way you're informed of all of our future episodes each and every time we upload. Of course, give us a thumbs up if you like any of our videos, including the one you're getting ready to watch, and drop a comment below, good, bad, or indifferent. We'll answer you each and every time. Very tough episode, guys. It's not gonna be a long intro, but I was quite surprised on the bait that actually elicited some fish on the end of the line. So let's get into this video. Let's see if slowing things down, we'll get uh, some bass on the end of the line. Again, we've been having a very difficult time. I've been talking to people uh, left and right and they're all having the same exact problems uh, here in Delaware, but it's not uncommon. This is part of being here. <laughs> but I think what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna start off with the jerk bait first. Super, super clear water. This fish should have no problem seeing this bait whatsoever. Just trying to get out here and be safe while I'm doing it. Hopefully I have some casting room behind me. But, yep, we got a stick behind us, guys. So we're gonna have to sidearm a lot here. We got a fish jumping around, that's good. Some life out there. Water's very, very cold. I got my boots on right here. I have a <laughs> nice pair of pants, plus I have long underwear on, and I can still feel the chill in the water. But I've not caught a bass on a pond or a lake with a jerk bait. Again, you saw me catch that errant one on the river, but this is a non-confidence bait for me, this uh, jerk bait that we're using. We're again using the Shadow Wrap by Rapala, Rapala, whichever one you want to pronounce it by. But we're gonna try to see if we can get one or two bass today. That's the goal. I did try to go striper fishing this morning. It wasn't happening. <laughs> and I don't wanna waste my whole day. I already tried on Saturday to fish for striper unsuccessful tried again first thing this morning unsuccessful so I gotta try to do something to produce fish and again striper are quite erratic bass are pretty much somewhat constant they're there you just got to find the bait to use fall is definitely here you can see that there are barely any leaves left on the uh, trees whatsoever we're completely transitioning and getting very close to winter uh, it is halfway through the month of November. And these fish are just gonna get slower and slower and it's gonna get harder and harder to catch fish. <laughs> All right, let me see if I can squat. Yeah. If I squat, I can get that cast going forward. I moved forward about another six inches and I should be able to clear. There's a fish right there. Fish on, guys. All right, my first jerkbait fish on a pond, guys. It's a decent one. All right, there you go, guys. All right, nice, decent bass. All right. <laughs> the shadow wrap comes through. That thing slammed that jerkbait. <laughs> All right, guys, finally something off my bucket list. Beautiful, beautiful looking bass. <laughs> about a pound and a half guys it's still a pretty fish but thank you Rapala Shadow Rap and uh, let's go ahead and get the uh, bait out of his face and we'll give her a nice little send off but again other than that big one that I had it took a long time just to get this bass on fresh water but uh, this bass is ready to go and uh, let's go ahead and give her a nice little release and she's gone. Let's get her back out there, see if we can try to get another one. I 
I'm excited, guys. I'm so glad I finally broke the ice on a bait that I don't otherwise use all the time. I kind of figured that bait was going to have a, a reaction to it because it's very reflective and these fish can't resist that flash. And of course you got the uh, beads that are in there, the BBs, to create that rattle. So that's kind of giving me a promise if we decide to go over to where the dock is over here and we cast out in the middle, we might get a couple more reactions out there if we don't get anything other than what we're catching right here, that one fish you saw. But I'm just giving him that pause and that's what they're striking on. I think there's another hit there, guys. Fish on. All right, here we go. Shit's, let me see me stuff starting up, guys. All right. <laughs> there you go, man. I decided to make a quick decision off the striper, and it was a good decision. So far, right now, this is a 100% productive day because we got more than one fish. And this fish really wants to get out of the clutches of this bait. He's not having any bit of it. But this fish is really, really cold right now. Let's see how quickly this one moves off. Gone. <laughs> that's letting me know that they're feeding. Basically chasing after minnow because that's what that literally looks like. And of course it's telling me that the fish are not down on the bottom. They're suspending because that bait's not a deep diver. It actually goes down maybe about a foot, possibly two. And then, again, as I told you, it rises up. I barely felt that fish tap that bait. We're switching over here. We're gonna go with the Guggen Baits rattling Ned. There's literally a, a rattle at the tip of this tail right here, and that subtle little noise and that little movement of the bait might draw these fish in again a little bit more so than the Jerk bait that we've been using, but I'll figure I'd just give it a couple tries to see if they go with the uh, the plastics as well too, on top of the jerk bait. But let's get that out there. I got a feeling we're gonna probably get the pickup of action here. As you can notice, flat calm right here, but the wind is blowing across the pond and into that canal all the way down there. You can see the ripples and everything, see the direction of the wind. That's where I think we're gonna get our action at. Because literally right now nothing's happened other than the two that we just caught a little while ago. As we bring this retrieve in, I am gonna give it a little bit of a pause here and just give my appreciation as well as the oakster to each and every one of you who have been through this channel through its history and of course the new people too as well because we thank you too because you will be part you're part of our success and continuing to grow on this platform uh the last 10 episodes guys have been absolutely amazing i've been texting back and forth to the oakster and as well you know calling and we cannot uh say any more about the success that you're giving to us right now out of 10 episodes two episodes literally have and to us it's viral guys i know you guys are gonna say well that's not much but to us it's a lot have had a thousand views in a very very short time as opposed to a couple of the videos that we have that it took a while to get to that the one previous to this one literally took not even two days to get to a thousand views and uh part of that success uh is to captain frank uh, Captain Frank, I'm going to give you your kudos because those two videos, which was the flounder video that you saw when he randomly got a hold of me through Facebook because he actually saw one of my YouTube channels being posted through there uh, and invited me onto his vessel and we blew it up on the flounder and had a great episode and then he called me again out of the blue and saying, do I want to go tog fishing, which is the previous one to this one. Both of those videos got a thousand views almost right now in a short period of time. So thank you, Captain Frank. Uh, you know, I can't thank you enough. I'm sure we're gonna go ahead and collaborate again. Uh, and uh, the, the view counts will definitely be picking up. So thank you for helping us out. If you can uh, you know, keep 
that's the bottom giving us a thumbs up and liking these videos if you do guys that helps us out too of course click subscribe click the notification bell to keep advised of all the future episodes real quick I want to give Oakster his due as you notice he's not been here for a while one he's got his job he, you know, he graduated college and he finally got the job that he wanted but right around this time, it's always hunting season, guys. That is his main squeeze. I'm just the mistress, the fishing mistress. So I get abandoned like a redheaded stepchild when it comes to that. But he got a deer of a lifetime, and I want to give him his due. Uh, I know there's some other hunters on her, guys, young or old, on this channel, I'm sure. And he caught this one here. Uh, open season was a couple days ago. And he calls this one Achilles, man. I think he said this is the biggest one. Uh, again, don't ask me about points and racks and guns and ammunition and everything. I'm completely ignorant to that. The Oster is the pro. So if you want to drop a comment below to him and ask him those questions, he is monitoring the channel. He does it every day. He answers questions here and there uh, that he can relate to. So if you want to answer, ask some hunting questions, ask him. He'll, he'll answer them. But uh, Oakster, great job, man. I'm, I'm happy for you, man, because this guy, he, he's got his whole heart on that hunting, man. He's in for that. All right, so let's go ahead and make our way down the other end. It's only going to take us a couple seconds to uh, get my rods in the car and jump on over there. And uh, we'll work that shoreline over here on the left-hand side. Made my way over to the dock right here. You can notice there's maybe about three inches from water to the bottom of this. That means that water is high, so I'm, I'm not going to be able to step over in front of here, which is what I normally do. So I'm going to be doing a lot of crouching here while I'm casting this bait. But let's get that uh, jerk bait out there. You can clearly see how much that wind has been blasting right along this uh, channel here. Upwind, here we go. on guys oh my goodness gracious oh he's on there it's a little dink <laughs> oh it's a bluegill <laughs> he got it on the side I really got him good all right let's get the pliers out and try to be ginger about this that's amazing how these fish just jump all over this bait something they don't normally go after but all right mr. bluegill Boom. This is going to be my last retrieve right here, so give me a couple seconds to bring this bait in. And uh, we'll try to figure out a game plan here to try to get some more fish on. Took a ride down the road here. Uh, I don't know how this is going to pan out. Again, I've never caught a bass using a jerk bait on this pond I like to go to. This is usually my lipless crankbait and as well chatterbait pond here. But we are going to give it a go. We have gizzard shad in here so that kind of almost looks like that because it does have that same reflective quality. But it looks like a lot more calmer than what we were trying to fish on uh, upstate because uh, the ripples are not as pronounced. But uh, we're going to try to get past uh, this water here because again, it's been quite high for quite a while And I'm hoping we can get an overhead cast going on All right, looks like I picked a pretty good spot to stand in but let's get our uh, Other rod hanging up in the tree here And I'm curious to see if these bass will hit up on this jerkbait Nice looking big old blue heron right there flying around there. Modern day pterodactyl. I think after I get done with the jerk bait here in a couple minutes, I'm gonna run to my car and I'm gonna go balls deep. I have a cotton cordell uh, lipless crankbait that's in there. I've been wanting to use it for the last couple weeks. Just haven't got it out of the box yet. But I'll show you what it is and we're just gonna see if we can try to get one on a fast moving bait here. Right now they're not hitting the Ned Rig and as well that jerk bait. 
We're at the car right now. I mentioned to you that we're gonna go ahead and use the Cotton Cordell. I've never used this brand before. Uh, we got the Super Spot. This is the Chrome Blue Black. But I'm gonna go ahead and goof off a little bit too. And I'm gonna go ahead and get out the cheap old bomber bait that we try to use for the striper a few episodes ago. Cause this thing's pretty loud. Uh, this one's got some good vibration, but it'd be funny if we can catch the biggest fish of the day on this cheap bait. Cause I've been really struggling today guys. And I wanna get something on the end of this line before we finish out this episode. All right, it's the lipless war. <laughs> We're gonna start out with a cheap one first, and then we'll get to work with the cotton cordell because again, that closely resembles what's floating around in the water over there. Let's get back into the office here. Ah, these sticker bushes, man, are getting on my nerves today. How many casts will it take for us to get something on a lipless? Here we go. Boom, big bomb. There's a fish right there, guys. Right at our feet. <laughs> the cheap bait gets it. <laughs> All right. It took us a bunch of casts just to get to that little guy. Boom. Walmart. <laughs> I figured that big loud rattle was going to get him. I'm so happy. It took... Two hours to get to that next guy. <laughs> She's gone. It took like maybe three or four casts. Let's get it back out there again. There might be a giant there for that Walmart bait. That's insane how one bait just changes things completely up. Give me a big one. That'll be awesome. End this thing out with a bang. There's a fish right there, guys. Oh my God, it's a good one, guys. Real good one. Oh yes, it's a giant, guys. We've been working all day for this. Oh no, are you kidding me? Wow, guys, I had him on. It was a giant. It was a giant. Wow, we worked all day for that. <laughs> Oh, man. As soon as he raised his head and he shook, man, that was it. Dang it. Jeez, oh, jeez. That's heartbreaking. <laughs> oh, boy. That had been a good three to four pound bass, easy. All right, we're gonna throw a couple more casts. We're gonna go over to uh, that other shoreline right there, throw some bombs out and we gotta get going. I gotta take care of some business, but I'm still uh, salty about that miss we had. Oh, right there. Oh, did you see that, guys? Right at our feet again. <laughs> wow. 
Wow. Cordell's uh, getting some work right now. All right, we're in the yard of the gentleman who allows me to come out and fish on his side. Are we going to be able to redeem ourselves here? That's the question. There we go, guys. Fish on. Yes, we got him. Got him. Finally. <laughs> it's not a full redemption, and he popped right off, too, guys. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it's not a giant, but we got him a second time. <laughs> All right. Let's see if we can get that giant. She's gone. All right. This is another one I have to add to my uh, box. The Cotton Cordell. Finally established a pattern. Woo. One thing is telling me that these hooks are not sharp. Because that's three times we had a fish. Obviously, we got it on a third time. But once I got the fish on shore, it popped right off. So we need to switch those up the next time uh, we bring this bait out. It does have one plus. It bombs to the next neighborhood there because uh, it goes far. All right, let's slide over to the other opening here. Real, real mushy over here. Oh, did you see that boil right there, guys? Holy crap right in front of us there's a big boil <laughs> there's a fish right there guys no god dang it <laughs> these hooks suck guys these hooks suck <laughs> there's, a, there's a big one sitting right there guys we're gonna get it There's a fish right there, guys. Oh, it's a nice one, too. We got to keep her on, guys. Keep the pressure on. Keep the pressure on. Keep the pressure on. All right, come on, baby. There you go. There you go. Finally, we get the monster. About a three-pounder. Look, see that? Did you see that, guys? The hook flew right off again. <laughs> These hooks suck. But I kept the pressure on. And I was able to get it in, guys. Another about two and a half pounder. Boom. So glad this episode's finally panning out to be something. Let's go over here. Put the cotton cordell. Putting in the work. Let me clean her up so you can get a better look at it. There you go. A couple more casts, guys. We're going to make our way home there. But uh, thank you. Thank you very much. She's gone. That was a very long day, very frustrating day, but somehow we we're able to cobble an episode together. <laughs> 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. That's how long we were out there just to get those few fish on. Uh, it did not start out strong. I, I was originally starting out as a striper episode, and I was out there, man, I'm full confidence. I'm gung-ho, I'm gonna get me striper. I know where I can get it at a new location because people are catching them all the time. But Mother Nature knocked my stuff to the dirt. She said, nope, ain't going to have it today. So I knew the weather was going to start deteriorating, and I couldn't travel all over the place to try to see if I may catch a striper. I had to go somewhere where I know I can catch some fish. So we 
changed direction and we went back to largemouth and good thing we did because uh, we finally put fish on uh, it was slow in the beginning but finally at the end it, it picked up uh, i i can't <laughs> I was getting beat up on that first pond, man, with the wind, man. It was just, just killing me, man. But we were able to get a fish, or I'm sorry, three fish on a non-confidence bait, which is that jerk bait. You saw me catch it on a river, but I've never, ever caught bass on a pond or a lake. Well, you saw it right there. So I, I was able to produce that way, and I'm happy. So now I know I can go out and catch fish and have the confidence to know that fish are going to bite if I use it the bait the right way. That Ned Rig, I was totally surprised on because you would think plastics, if it's slow as anything, you would think at least a dink or two would pop up on it, but nope. Those fish did not touch the bait for the rest of the day, nor did they touch that jerk bait for the rest of the day on the first pond. So I had to think to myself, I'm getting beat up by this wind. Do I really want to make this drive down to this one pond? I know I'm going to be protected uh, from the wind by because of all the trees that are around it. And I was like, you know what? D screw it. Nothing's happening, really. Let's just do it. So I drove down to that pond and it, I made a good decision. Uh, when I got there, of course, I told you the jerk bait and the Ned Rig weren't doing anything. And I said, I'm gonna go balls deep. It's chilly, it's nasty, it's crazy. You know, the temperature's going low, we're losing pressure, I, you know, whatever. So I said, I'm gonna put two lipless crankbaits on it and we're just gonna see what happens. So you saw right there in front of you, that cheap bomber bait i three or four casts in i caught a little dink and then of course after that i just died but as soon as i tied onto that cotton cordell at the end of that line those fish lit up they were tearing that bait up the only problem i have with that bait is the hooks are not sharp because that heartbreaking from three to five pounds that was on the end of that line that fish it came up out of the water and shook its head and that bait just flew right out but that wasn't the only one. I had multiple fish where that bait just came out so easily. And that's not supposed to happen when you got two sets of trebles. They're supposed to be tack sharp and they were not. Even when you saw those fish that I pulled into the shoreline on the, the people's house that I fish on, their property over there, you saw that bait came easily out of their mouths. So we're gonna have to rectify that problem because that's not a good problem to have, especially on these next few episodes we're gonna go on and it starts getting colder and we wanna use that jerk bait or we wanna use that crankbait. We gotta make sure we have the strongest hooks possible on there so you're pinning them fish because again, it's only gonna get slower, it's only gonna get colder and these fish are not gonna wanna bite that much. But I was glad I was able to get fish on there. I was glad I was able to put something in front of you guys because it was very, very frustrating, but we did it. And now we got to move on to the next weekend, which is going to be difficult too. <laughs> but I hope you have a great day. Like, subscribe, push that notification bell so you get any of our future episodes up in front of you once we upload each and every episode on our weekly basis. I hope you guys have a great weekend. Hopefully you're catching big bass. And as always, guys, fish on.